I'm out here on the Diablo range today. I'm trying to change it up a little bit. It's only the second time I've been in this mountain range the or all year. So we're gonna see some stuff. So far it's only been common things like uh, fence lizards, a few slender salamanders. If you look over here, there's a couple of really big bullfrogs sitting at the bank of the stream. There's one kind of tucked in the shadows there. And there's one there above that small gray rock. Right there. And that one's really big right there. So, um, let's see what happens when we get a little closer. It'll probably jump into the water. There they go. Big bullfrogs. Sheesh. have a nice adult Pacific rattlesnake right here. Uh, we just startled it, so it's pretty mad at us and rattling very hard. You can see it tucked under that rock. Poised to strike, though. Very cool. Sometimes when you just look at these rock piles, it pays off. Look for things like this. Nice rattlesnake right there second of the day. So an idea of some nice Diablo range habitat. Dry and rocky. After about five minutes of searching, I see a rattlesnake in that little triangular rock crevice. I don't know if uh, the camera's gonna be able to pick it up because it's in the shade. It's so bright out here. I'll see if I can get a closer look though, but it might tuck back further into the rocks. This video probably won't focus very well because of the lighting situation, but here's a better look. Here's a coil that I saw when I was walking up, and maybe you can see the face of the snake there. Very cool. Well, if you can hear that, you'll know that I just startled the rattlesnake that saw me before I saw it. <laughs> ah, I always prefer to see them um, before they realize they've been seen. So that's when you get to get a nice view of them. But uh, that one got startled and tucked back in that rock crevice behind this plant here. Um, very snaky on this little rock outcrop here. That's a good sign. <laughs> That's the fourth rattlesnake of the day. I also saw a gopher snake that uh, tucked into a rock crevice before I could show it to you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I see a fifth rattlesnake under here. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a very good look at this one. I just saw the rattle sticking out. Well, not quite sticking out, but I could see it. And it looked... Pretty pale. I thought maybe it was not attached to a snake, but I see the snake's tail in there as well. Okay, but I'm gonna leave that one alone. This has to be a den site. There are just so many here. That's three in like not very long, and it's very warm, so they've already started dispersing into the rest of this area. Um, so I imagine. In the early spring, this spot must be thick with rattlesnakes. And that's generally where you're going to find rattlesnake dens. They like these inaccessible places, you know, relatively speaking. These will, uh, you know, provide some protection. It's, uh... Nice guarded place, especially from a mammal like me. <laughs> He's kind of clumsy on this super cobbly, rocky stuff, and who um, can be affected by poison oak, which there's a lot of here. Right now, we're looking at a California sagebrush, though, but there's some poison oak sprinkled in. There's some there. 
so makes it very unpleasant uh, generally to be in but uh, to me the positive of being around the snakes far outweigh that I'm making my way back down now I explored for about 15 minutes saw three snakes here there's undoubtedly many that I probably passed without seeing or you know they were tucked in a crevice or something but this is a cool little place. There's a scrub jay calling. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna make my way back down. I might see if that one rattlesnake maybe came back out to bask again. Um, probably hasn't been enough time, but you never know. But I gotta get going in a minute here, so. If I can see that snake a little better, that would be really cool. Always got to be careful where you place your hands and stuff in areas like this. Can be a bit hazardous. As long as you're careful, look where you're going. Um, you can fairly easily avoid being bitten. Right after I recorded that clip, um, I startled another snake. This one was already under the rock, though. I can see its shed it looks fresh. I don't know if you can see it. That's cool. That's the fourth snake I saw up here. Sixth rattlesnake of the day. Oh my gosh, here's another one. I was just thinking that I'm pretty close to where that other snake was. And that maybe that one I saw earlier had moved down here. Under that rock where I just spooked a snake. Um, but this one's even closer. And, you know, I have a feeling that this is also a different snake. I'm going to try to look in this next rock, though, and see if I can see the other one. As I'm walking down, here's another rattlesnake. Um, gosh, where are we at now? I think this is the sixth one I've seen right here. Um, and the eighth total today. Amazing. There are so many here. This has to be a dense site. This one's really rearing up on me too. I'm standing a good distance away too. But uh, this one's making itself known that it's not happy about that. <laughs> My presence. Gosh, look at this beauty. They're so variable in coloration. That last one I was looking at had a, you know, really dark grays and almost white. And this one is like green and yellow. Wow, you can hear it hiss too. Usually when they're upset, the sound of the rattle really masks over um, their hissing, but they do hiss like other snakes. So cool. Like yeah, so that's the the musk. It's kind of just a foul odor and uh, presumably not a very good taste either. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. So exactly. But yeah, nice to see them on a cool day where they're not going to be <laughs> hard to catch. I mean, he's still rearing up a bit, but yeah, it's definitely not as much attitude as I've seen from warmed up racers. <laughs> Here's a nice cold little gopher snake, side of the road, kind of. Really pretty though. Gorgeous fella. He's got a nice food bowl as too. Two western yellow-bellied racers hanging out together under this board on a nice cool day. Normally they would probably bolt, but because of the low temperatures they're staying put without much energy to expend. Very cool though. So since this is potentially a mating pair, we might want to just not pick them up. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping we'd see that one. Yeah, that's a... yeah they're usually here. <laughs> oh. Nice little Pacific ring neck. Let's look at that one in your book. Yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna do a little clip. This is a nice adult 
Pacific ringneck. This one is in shed, as you can see. We have kind of a more pinkish coloration and a, a dull kind of olive hue to the dorsal side instead of the kind of black and bright orange coloration that we usually see. So there were actually two under here, but the first one sucked into that hole very quickly. <laughs> very cool. Here's a little neonate ringneck snake. It's one of the smallest ones I've seen. Really gorgeous. I'm kind of surprised I don't see more actually. Seeing less and less of these guys lately, and it'll be more so that way in the coming months. But. Pretty salamander though. Yeah. Have you seen? Don't know how many more of these I'll be seeing. <laughs> Arboreal salamander. It's quickly drying out in this area, so they will be less and less common. Here we have a little Santa Cruz black salamander in San Mateo County, along this little creek here. They have this kind of green coloration as juveniles. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera right now because the lighting is not very good. But very cool to see. Hopefully this is a slightly better look at this guy. What a cool little creature, huh? They can be pretty difficult to tell apart from arboreal salamanders when they're juveniles. Nice Sierra and tree frog. Beautiful lime green individual. Pretty close to that black salamander we were just looking at. Alright, here's another black salamander. Pretty happy to see this population here. I'll just run across a couple of bullfrogs, which is, of course, not ideal. They're very detrimental to our native amphibian populations. But I'm glad these guys are doing okay, seemingly. Here is black salamander number three. I'm kind of hoping to see an adult. All three have been these little juveniles so far. All right, just found a nice big California newt in the water. Good size, this is probably female, full of eggs. I'll let her go in a moment. Yeah, just stumbled upon a little ring neck out on the crawl on the trail here. Pretty cool. Don't see them moving around on the surface during daylight hours very often. What a gorgeous little snake though. Nice big southern alligator lizard. Oh my gosh, camera won't focus. <laughs> He's missing a foot though. There we go. Here's a better look. Eh, not anymore. Here's a better look. <laughs> look at that. Little baby ringneck snake. I mean, <laughs> sorry, not a ringneck. It's a sharp tailed snake. They're both small fossil reels, and I see a lot more ringnecks, so. That's immediately what my mind went to. Pretty though. I'm gonna have to count the uh, caudal scales to see if this is the common sharp-tailed or the forest sharp-tailed though. These are little slug eaters. And this is actually my first sharp-tail of the year. <laughs> you can kind of see just how small this little snake is next to my hand. They get bigger than this, of course. But similar to the ringnecks that I see a lot of, um, these guys are very small. <laughs> Little fossorial snakes. They like moisture. So I don't see them so much when it gets dry. And it just rained for the first time in, well, the first appreciable rain in a couple months. Okay, this one actually is a ringneck, as you can see. It's that gorgeous orange belly. 
You can hear Stellar Shoes calling in the background. So yeah, these guys live a similar lifestyle to the sharp-tailed snake I just showed you. They both live underground for the most part, taking small prey like invertebrates. As these guys get bigger, they are known to eat other herps though, even other snakes. Which is pretty, <laughs> it's pretty funny because they're usually the smallest snakes that you see. Alright, two nice adult gopher snakes under this board. Beautiful. I'm gonna try to get some pictures of these guys. Alright, so I let that slightly larger gopher snake go back under the board because this one's really nice and orange and pretty. Wanted to get some decent photographs. <laughs> Gorgeous snake. Look at that guy. Had a couple nice California newts. Very cool. Seeing less of these lately, especially um, terrestrial ones. Look at that. Cool. Alright, this is the night snake. They're super cool. They look similar to a gopher snake, but those dark marks behind the head. And then take a look at these eyes. These are ways you can tell them apart. It almost looks like the snake has no pupil. But uh, being a heavily nocturnal snake, and one that has elliptical pupils, kind of like a cat's eye, the eye, uh, the pupil will um, contract in conditions of high light because these snakes want to let in lots of light at night as much as possible when it's super dark out. So they have sensitive eyes and their eye does this to protect that sensitive pupil. What a spectacular snake though. Not one you usually expect to see in the Santa Cruz mountains. Sprinkling again but, and there's a new out on the curl. Or a California new. Handsome. And a flip. Oh, nice. Another gopher snake. Pretty. I might not mess with this guy. Here's a pretty little juvenile ringneck. Gorgeous. Look at that belly. This guy's pretty small, too. Not as small as that one I saw recently, but. Yeah, that's a little snake. <laughs> Alright, let this guy go back under his rock. And here we are with the beautiful Santa Cruz black salamander. That's a nice beefy one. They get bigger than this, but it's a decent sized adult. Beautiful animal. Classic. Those recent rains really helped. So I haven't seen these guys in this area for a while. Very cool. I love these guys. Look at this animal. See that, uh, how its throat is kind of moving up and down like that? That's uh, to help with respiration. These are a member of uh, the family Plethodontidae. They're the lungless salamanders. And so that little motion, it's called gular fluttering. Um, it helps them move uh, oxygen into their body. Cool little tidbit. And here's another one. Second black salamander of the day. Alright, out here today with Greg Schechter, our Schechter Field Guides. And we just got our first snake of the day. Nice little Pacific gopher snake. Here's Greg with the second snake of the day. It is a nice little western yellow-bellied racer. Actually, it's a pretty good, decent sized one. <laughs> Beautiful snake, though. Those big eyes, indicative of a diurnal snake. Do most people have most people? Yeah. Um, I guess Pacific I. Green um, yeah. In, in some of the videos, I do say that, like, oh, it's I'm going north of where I live or whatever. I see. Um, yeah. 
turned up another little Pacific ring neck. These are such gorgeous snakes. Look at that coloration. Totally underrated because of how common they are. <laughs> Here we go with our second gopher snake of the day. Look at the girth on this guy. He's not a, a big gopher snake, but he's hefty. <laughs> Very nice.